And now it's time for development debates, where we dig deeper into some of the questions shaping the future and present of China. Today, our debate's topic is what's to be done with home mortgages when the homes are ruined in an earthquake? In the morning of April 20th, 2013, an earthquake whose magnitude was up to seven hit Lushan and Ya'an in Sichuan province of China. The earthquake has resulted in 196 deaths and at least 11,825 injured and hundreds of millions of dollars in loss. In the past two weeks, disaster rehabilitation work has been in progress. Residents gradually recover from the shock and start to think about practical issues as potential problems begin to emerge. Infrastructure construction suffered great losses. According to rough estimation, almost half the buildings of the affected area were wrecked. Loss of home loans involved in this disaster were approximately $175 million. What to do with home mortgages while the homes are ruined in the earthquake is put forward here in China, causing huge discussion and dispute. Some lawyers hold that as long as the homeowner is alive, the loan obligations shouldn't be wavered. They still have to pay for it. While some Chinese Internet users, or put it another way, netizens, are quite resentful to such a proposal. Experts and analysts of different fields maintain various views also. Ron Jiu Wen, a renowned lawyer and commentator on current affairs, has a totally different view with the lawyers mentioned above. Homes that were destroyed due to the earthquake should be free from mortgages, in his opinion. As stipulated by the contract law of China, either two parties shall terminate the contract, provided that the aim of it could not be achieved due to major force. In this case, the earthquake should be defined as the major force, and the aim of the contract, that is to acquire the right of habitation, is destroyed when the homes fell down. So the obligation to pay mortgages should be wavered. Also, according to the confirmation of the equity principle formulated by the contract law, it would be unfair if the commercial banks still demand mortgages when the pledge is broken down. Last but not least, he believes that the foundation of the law is that it reflects common sense and conventions, or it wouldn't be energetic and long-lasting. It's only human that earthquake victims be free of loan obligations after they have lost so much in the disaster. As for the economic loss of commercial banks, he suggests to cover it in other ways. Tao Duanfang, a famous public intellectual and columnist, may consider the suggestion of Ron Zhe Wen kind of unfair. He does admit that it's theoretically legal for homeowners to pay mortgages despite broken homes here in China, but the actual conditions of China are pretty special. Although home prices of the disaster-affected area is not that high compared to other Chinese cities, correspondingly, the income level of local residents is also low. Now their homes might be ruined, let alone their families. He doesn't think the opinion that the home mortgage should be exempted by administrative means as a responsible one. Though it's well-intentioned, it's easy for those frauds to take advantage and be unfair to commercial banks. Tao Duanfang suggests that rehabilitation funds should be set up to support victims in need. Simply saying, the government pays the mortgage for these homeowners. In this way, earthquake victims get assistance and commercial banks wouldn't suffer that much economic loss too. In the long run, commercial insurance would be the best method to cope with the sudden disaster. On the other hand, law construction is in urgent need in China concerning earthquake prevention and disaster reduction. From the perspective of humanity, it would be cruel if these earthquake victims are to pay the home loan when homes are ruined. But whether the commercial bank or the government is responsible for such loss is hard to decide. Relevant law is badly in need.